What is a transmission tower? A transmission tower also known as a power transmission tower, power tower, or electricity pylon is a tall structure usually a steel lattice tower used to support an overhead power line. In electrical grids, they are used to carry high voltage transmission lines that transport bulk electric power from generating stations to electrical substations, utility poles are used to support lower voltage sub-transmission and distribution lines that transport power from substations to electric customers. Electrical Transmission Tower Types and Design The main supporting unit of overhead transmission line is transmission tower. Transmission towers have to carry the heavy transmission conductor at a sufficient safe height from ground. In addition to that all towers have to sustain all kinds of natural calamities. Power Transmission Tower consists of following parts. Peak of Transmission Tower Crossarm, boom, cage of transmission tower, transmission tower body, leg of transmission tower, stub anchor bolt and base plate assembly of transmission tower. Transmission tower types There are several types of transmission tower in many variations, but they can be roughly grouped as Suspension towers Conductors are suspended between two towers using suspension insulators. Terminal towers Conductors from a transmission line are connected to a substation or underground cable via a tower's strain insulators. insulators. Tension towers. The tower can cater for the weight of the cables and axial loading strain in a horizontal direction. Transposition towers. The tower changes the position of the conductors on a transmission line relative to each other e.g. in position X, out position Y. Components of transmission tower. The cage of the tower. The area between the body and the peak is the cage of the transmission tower. Peak of the tower. The portion at the top of the tower which is above the top crossarm is called the peak of the tower. Crossarm of the tower. The side arms of the tower on both sides hold the transmission conductor is called the crossarm of the tower. Transmission tower body. The distance from the lowest crossarm of the tower to the ground is called the transmission tower body. It is necessary for towers, as it provides the height of the tower required for ground clearance. Main parts among these are shown in the pictures, peak of transmission tower. The portion above the top crossarm is called peak of transmission tower. Generally, earth shield wire connected to the tip of this peak. Cage of transmission tower. The portion between tower body and peak is known as cage of transmission tower. This portion of the tower holds the cross arms. Cross arm of transmission tower. Cross arms of transmission tower hold the transmission conductor. The dimension of cross arm depends on the level of transmission voltage, configuration and minimum forming angle for stress distribution. Transmission tower body. The portion from bottom cross arms up to the ground level is called transmission tower body. This portion of the tower plays a vital role for maintaining required ground clearance of the bottom conductor of the transmission line. Transmission tower design During design of transmission tower the following points to be considered in mind. The minimum ground clearance of the lowest conductor point above the ground level. The length of the insulator string. The minimum clearance to be maintained between con conductors and tower. The location of a ground wire with respect to outermost conductors. The midspan clearance required from considerations of the dynamic behavior of the conductor and lightning protection of the power line. To determine the actual transmission tower height by considering the above points, we have divided the total height of the tower into four parts. Minimum permissible ground clearance H1. Maximum sag of the overhead conductor H2. Vertical spacing between the top and bottom conductors H3. Vertical clearance between the ground wire and top conductor H4. Types of electrical transmission towers. According to different considerations, there are different types of transmission towers. The transmission line goes as per available corridors. Due to the unavailability of the shortest distance straight corridor transmission line has to deviate from its straightway when obstruction comes. In the total length of a long transmission line, there may be several deviation points. According to the angle of deviation, there are four types of transmission towers you hear. As per the force applied by the conductor on the cross arms, 
the transmission towers can be categorized in another ways which is tangent suspension tower and it is generally called a type tower. Then another one is angle tower or tension tower or sometime it is called section tower. All B, C and D types of transmission towers come under this category. Apart from the above customized type of tower, the tower is designed to meet special usages like river crossing tower, railway highway crossing tower, transposition tower. Another way is based on numbers of circuits carried by a transmission tower, it can be classified as single circuit tower, double circuit tower, multi-circuit tower. Let's discuss more. Every high voltage transmission line is supported by a transmission tower. Tower structures are different from basic power poles. They support multiple high voltage lines as opposed to the single poles that handle local delivery. Towers are important for the transport of large quantities of electricity over a long distance. Transmission towers combine with substations and pole lines to form the electrical grid. The major types of transmission towers can categorize as bellow. Suspension tower. Tension tower. Transposition tower. Special tower. Lattice towers. Tubular towers. Concrete towers. Hybrid towers. Following are the types of transmission tower types which are widely used by considering the technical background. These transmission types are mainly classified according to its unique features and different applications on electrical power transmission. Suspension towers. Mainly the suspension towers are on the way of that straight line of transmission line. It may also vary maximum to degree of 5 angle. The high voltage suspension towers are designed to carry the only weight of the conductor in straight line position. Most of towers in any transmission line is fall into this type of tower category and construction cost of suspension type transmission lines are much cheaper compared to other types of transmission lines. Suspension towers tangent towers are used primarily on tangents but are often designed to withstand angles in the line only up to 2 degrees, in addition to wind, ice, and broken conductor loads. If the transmission line traverses relatively flat featureless terrain, 90% of the line may be composed of this type of tower. Thus, the design of tangent tower provides the greatest opportunity for the structural engineer to minimize the total weight of steel required for the transmission system. Angle towers Angle towers, sometimes called semi-anchor towers, must resist transverse loads induced at an angle in addition to the usual wind, ice, and broken conductor loads. Angle towers are heavier than suspension towers by necessity. Guide cross rope suspension tower with its simple desi design, this tower is easy to assemble. It's used on some sections of power lines leaving the La Grande complex and support 735 kV conductors. This type of structure requires less galvanized steel than the guide V tower, making it lighter and less costly. Tension towers angle. Electrical tension towers are used at locations where the angle of deviation is more than degree of 5. These towers are also known as angle towers and the tower are designed to take the tension load of the cable. Tension towers are mostly used for turning points and for the section isolate locations. Dead end tower. Dead end towers anchor towers support the weight of the connecting conductors and cater for the tension in the conductors. This type of tower also uses strain insulators. Dead-end towers are typically used at the end of a transmission line before the line passes to a substation or underground line. Transposition Tower Transposition towers are specially used for transposing the conductors of three-phase line. Transposition arrangement is also called as span transposition. These types of towers are widely used in long transmission lines. These types of towers are much less used in recently. Major idea behind transposition is to change the three phase according to determined arrangement to obtain better performance in transmission line. Special towers These towers are used at locations such as those involving long span river crossings, valley crossings, power line crossings from above existing lines, power lines crossings below existing lines gantry type structures, tapping to existing lines, special termination towers etc. The cost for a special tower is much higher than suspension tower line costs. The design of special tower is much based on the lo location. Lattice towers. Lattice towers are the most common type of transmission towers, consisting of steel frames that form a triangular or square shape. They are strong, flexible, and easy to assemble and transport. 
Lattice towers can support multiple circuits and span long distances, making them suitable for most terrains and weather conditions. However, they also have some drawbacks, such as high maintenance costs, visual impact, and susceptibility to corrosion and bird collisions. A lattice tower is a framework construction made of steel or aluminum sections. Most common type for high-voltage transmission lines. Aluminum is used for reducing weight, such as in mountainous areas where structures are placed by helicopter. The extra material cost of aluminum towers will be offset by lower installation cost. Lattice steel towers are generally made of angle-profiled steel beams L or T-beams. For very tall towers, trusses are often used. Tubular towers Tubular towers are made of hollow steel tubes that are welded or bolted together. They are more compact, aesthetic, and resistant to corrosion than lattice towers, but they are also more expensive, heavier, and harder to transport and install. Tubular steel pole Featuring a streamlined, aesthetic shape, this structure is less massive than other towers, allowing it to blend easily into the environment. Concrete towers Concrete towers are made of reinforced or pre-stressed concrete that is cast in situ or prefabricated. They are durable, stable, and low-maintenance, but they are also bulky, rigid, and difficult to modify or relocate. Hybrid towers Hybrid towers are made of a combination of materials, such as steel and concrete, or steel and wood. They aim to optimize the advantages and minimize the disadvantages of each material, depending on the specific needs and conditions of the project. Waste type tower. This is the most common type of transmission tower. It's used for voltages ranging from 110 to 735 kV. Because they're easily assembled, these towers are suitable for power lines that cross very uneven terrain. Double circuit tower. The small footprint tower is used for voltages ranging from 110 to 315 kV. Guide V Tower This tower is designed for voltages ranging from 230 to 735 kV. It's used mainly for power lines leaving the La Grande and Manic Utard's hydroelectric complexes. The Guide V Tower is more economical than the double circuit and waste type towers. Crossings of Towers most prominent towers used when overhead power lines must cross large water bodies, such as the river. However, there is another way to reach the opposite shore, underneath the river. Railway Traction Line Towers Towers used for single-phase AC railway traction lines are similar in construction to those towers used for 110 kV three-phase lines. Steel tube or concrete poles are also often used for these lines. However, railway traction current systems are two-pole AC systems, so traction lines are designed for two conductors or multiples of two, usually four, eight, or twelve. Three-phase electric power systems are used for high-voltage 66 kV or 69 kV and above and extra high-voltage 110 kV or 115 kV and above, most often 138 kV or 230 kV and above in contemporary systems, AC transmission lines. In some European countries, e.g. Germany, Spain or Czech Republic, smaller lattice towers are used for medium voltage above 10 kV transmission lines too. The towers must be designed to carry three or multiples of three conductors. Towers for different types of currents. AC circuits of different frequency and phase count, or AC and DC circuits, may be installed on the same tower. Usually, all circuits of such lines have voltages of 50 kV and more. However, there are some lines of this type for lower voltages. For example, towers used by both railway traction power circuits and the general three-phase AC grid. High voltage direct current. HVDC transmission lines are either monopolar or bipolar systems. With bipolar systems, a conductor arrangement with one conductor on each side of the tower is used. On some schemes, the ground conductor is used as electrode line or ground return. In this case, it had to be installed with insulators equipped with surge arresters on the pylons in order to prevent electrochemical corrosion of the pylons. For single-pole HVDC transmission with ground return, towers with only one conductor can be used. In the latter case, the line from the converter station to the earthing grounding electrode is built as underground cable, as overhead line on a separate right-of-way or by using the ground conductors. 
Electrode line towers are used in some HVDC schemes to carry the power line from the converter station to the grounding electrode. They are similar to structures used for lines with voltages of 10 to 30 kV, but normally carry only one or two conductors. AC transmission towers may be converted to full or mixed HVDC use to increase power transmission levels at a lower cost than building a new transmission line. Let's discuss about tower terminology. Transmission tower is the name for the structure used in the industry in the United States and some other English-speaking countries. The term electricity pylon or simply pylon comes from the basic shape of the structure, an obelisk-like structure which tapers toward the top, and the name is mostly used in the United Kingdom and parts of Europe in everyday colloquial speech. Let's discuss about tower assembly. Before transmission towers are even erected, prototype, prototype towers are tested at tower testing stations. There are a variety of ways they can then be assembled and erected. They can be assembled horizontally on the ground and erected by push-pull cable. This method is rarely used because of the large assembly area needed. Let's discuss about markers balls. The International Civil Aviation Organization issues recommendations on markers for towers and the conductors suspended between them. Certain jurisdictions will make these recommendations mandatory, for example that certain power lines must have overhead wire markers placed at intervals, and that warning lights be placed on any sufficiently high towers, this is particularly true of transmission towers which are in close vicinity to airports. Transmission towers, much like other steel lattice towers including broadcasting or cell phone towers, are marked with signs which discourage public access due to the danger of the high voltage. Often this is accomplished with a sign warning of the high voltage. At other times, the entire access point to the transmission corridor is marked with a sign. Transmission Tower Loads The loads acting upon an electrical transmission tower are numerous and dynamic, some are listed here. Like dead load of tower, dead load from conductors and other equipment, load from snow on conductors and equipment. Ice load on the tower itself, erection and maintenance loads, wind load on the tower, wind load on conductors and equipment, loads from conductor tensile forces, seismic activity loads earthquakes etc. The average span length is usually chosen to be between 300 and 450 meters. The occurrence of ice and snow etc. adds to the weight of the parts covered, and it increases their exposure to the effects of wind. Underestimation of these circumstances has frequently led to damage and collapse of transmission towers. Now you can see different types of towers used worldwide. 500 kV goat head shaped landscape tower transmission line steel tower used in Tibet area. Sheep horns electric towers, Tibet, China. The Ali region of Tibet is located in the scenic area of Mount Kailash and Mount Everest. Local engineers chose to design the steel tower with the representative animals of the region, the Gangba sheep and the white fleece goat, to integrate the electrical towers with the local natural landscape. 400 kV Y-frame steel tower Similar to delta tower but there is no horizontal crossbeam between the two top structures crossbeams at the joint or further down as possible. The middle conductor is supported directly by the top structures.